Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah to the Most High God, saints. He is worthy of all of our praise today. He is so holy. And we just want to give Him thanks today and praise. And just worship Him in the beauty of holiness. And Lord, Father God, we thank you today for showing us great and mighty things in our life, Lord, for saving us, for reaching down your loving hand and snatching us out of the fire, oh God. Thank you. We bless and praise your holy name. You are the Holy King, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, when we see you face to face, Oh, what a day that will be, Father. I pray today, Lord, that we could see you in our heart, that we could see you more, and that we realize that we come to the fuller understanding that you have ordered our days. They're ordered of you. We can rest assured that you know what you are doing, Father. Keep us straight in the narrow way, Lord, looking unto you, the author, the finisher of our faith, the shepherd, the bishop of our souls. We thank you and glorify you and praise you. Crush the devil, Lord. Put him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I just thank the Lord today. We're just so glad you could be with us and share in this word today and be blessed by the Almighty God because he wants to bless his children so much. He, he sees all the stuff going on in the religious realm and he knows there are multitudes who are trapped in the deception of the devil but see we need to stay in the word as God's people his word is going to preserve us his word in the precious blood of Jesus see it's because of the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony that we overcome the dragon see this word right here I have in my lap is the word of my testimony it's the truth it's the word of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah today's message because he loves us because he loves us see what other reason do we need to worship our King to walk in his way to follow him to let him be the leader. Not we ourselves, but him. To do what he says to do. The law that he's written in our hearts when we're born anew filled with his spirit. What, what, what excuse do we need? What reason do we need to not follow him? We must follow him and do what he says to do. Because he loves us, he saved us. He cares about us. It's not for any other reason. None of us can stand before God and say, look what I, I did. Look what I've done, Lord. Aren't you so pleased with that? That's the Cain principle. No, look at our unity, Lord. We have such unity. Everybody just gets along and, you know, oh, but see, there's no word. Because see, Jesus said the word of truth will come in and divide. See, the true and the false. Because some people are false. And some are true. But this politically correct society we happen to be in today, you know, everybody's right, nobody's wrong, and we just all get along. No, no, no. Because, see, there's the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, his kingdom. He is the kingdom. Hallelujah. He is the rule. Hallelujah. He is the almighty God in the flesh. And everything that's outside of Christ is antichrist. It's against Christ. And that's all this whole world today and all these religious systems of man, starting with the Pope of Rome right on down through every religion man has ever created or have. And we need to be sure and know, see, that we're walking in the narrow way. Because he loves us. I want to read today Psalm 145. And Psalm 145 
It's David's psalm of praise. See, because he loves us. Here's David, just a young man, probably 16 or 17 years old, been taking care of his daddy's sheep since he was probably 12 or 10 out in the field. His big brothers, get out there and watch the sheep, kick him in the butt. Get out there and watch the sheep, David. And David's out there watching the sheep, thinking about his forefathers, thinking about the stories that his father and his grandfather and his great grandfather have told him. And he's and he's just, you know, out there just contemplating Jehovah, contemplating Yahweh. Getting to know him in his heart, singing unto him, and taking care of the sheep, a shepherd of real sheep. And, and he's growing up and, you know, and here's David in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. God tells Samuel, why are you weeping for Saul? Stop it. Okay. So I've rejected Saul. I've rejected the religious system of this day. <laughs> this political system that the people have required and wanted. I've rejected that. Saul has disobeyed me. Saul has gone the other way. Go to Jesse's house over in Bethlehem. I've, I've got me a king right there from among his sons. Go over there, Samuel. So Samuel goes, and, and here comes Jesse and all of his sons, and they, they're all decked out. They got their finest robes on, and Samuel's like, oh, surely this is the one. And the Lord says to Samuel, no. That's not the one. You're looking on the outward appearance, Samuel. I'm looking on the heart. So all of seven of Jesse's sons go before Samuel, and the Lord says, Nope, none of these are the one. So Samuel says, You have any more sons, <laughs> Jesse? Yeah, we do. One more. He's the youngest. He's he's out in the field taking care of the sheep. And Jesse and Samuel says, well, bring him in because we're not going to sacrifice. We're not going to have a meal here until you bring him in. I have to see him. So they go and sit, fetch for David. An hour later, here comes David coming in. And the Bible says he was ready. I mean, he's right out of the field now. He don't have a fancy gown on. Oh, but I'm sure his complexion was radiant. See, being out there talking to Yahweh. Being out there contemplating the Lord and thinking about the goodness of his God. Hallelujah. Because he loves us. See, God chose David. And God told Samuel, he's the one. He's the one. Anoint him. And Samuel took out his horn of oil and poured it all over David's head. And the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon David from that hour and left Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord was sent to Saul. You see, these people today in the church who reject the truth, see, an evil spirit from the Lord is sent to them. God says he will send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie so that they all might be damned who do not love the truth and hold the truth in righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. We can't deviate from the word. Oh, but that sword's too hard, John. Oh, that sword, it hurts my flesh. That's right, it should. You need to fall on the rock. We need to fall on the rock and be broken once and for all. Hallelujah. So that if that flesh man tries to rise up, we know we put a nix on it by the word of God. Hallelujah. We rebuke it. We acknowledge the truth of the Lord Jesus that he has finished the work. Hallelujah. He said, I don't have to walk by the law of sin anymore. He destroyed the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. But see, man is so puffed up in pride. He has to make his own self-help programs. Yeah. Remember a long time ago, back in the 80s. Back in the 70s even. And it started way before that, Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, and you have your own, everybody has their own higher power, you know. And they have this self-help group and they all sit around and, and talk about their lives and their stories. And I've been sober for 45 days. I've been sober for 275 days. You know, and they're counting the days how long they have stopped drinking alcohol. And I'm not trying to down people who are in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm saying it is a work of the flesh. Okay? 
But a lot of people, when it first started out, their higher power was the Lord, they, they the Lord Jesus. But today, oh boy, you, you talk about Jesus, uh-uh. No, you don't talk about Jesus in Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. See, he's way down on the totem pole now, way down there at the bottom. Because their higher power is their self. Their self and their Eastern mysticism and their Hinduism and their yoga and their meditation and their wickedness and evil. See, all of mankind, all of mankind who are not in Christ Jesus, those who are not born anew and filled with the Spirit of God are in rebellion against the Holy One of Israel. In rebellion. These self-help programs in the church today, they are not helping anybody. They are keeping people bound in the flesh. The only way to get deliverance from the flesh man is to come to the Lord Jesus, fall on the rock and be broken, and take up your cross daily and walk with him. Deny ourselves and walk with the Lord. Because he loves us, we are able to do that. Because he loves us, he sent his only begotten son to die for us. He became a man. God did. Hallelujah. He became a man. And he was tempted in every way that we are yet without sin. He is the root and the offspring of David. And right here in Psalm 145, David who went through so many tribulations. It actually uses that word in the book of Samuel that David went through much tribulation. See, much tribulation. And the Lord showed me one time. He said, from the fall, from the time that mankind fell, we don't know how long it was after God created Adam and Eve, put him in the garden, so it said, replenish the earth, be fruitful and multiply. <coughs> we don't know how long it was until the fall might have been a hundred years might have been a thousand years I don't know nobody knows okay but you think about it. let's just say it was a thousand years how many children could they have in a thousand years that's a lot of children okay especially if Eve had twins and then those children started having children see so it could be a lot of people and then the fall took place and darkness came down and darkness and and the devil took control of man because man gave him the control not because he came in and twisted man's arm behind his back and said now you give me the control no 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 the devil came in with a slick lie with a with a with a doubt with a question putting doubt upon the word of god the word of god was don't eat of that tree in the day you eat of that tree you're gonna die the tree of the knowledge of good and evil good and evil so today you have so many religious people doing good, but they're doing it from the flesh. See? And God does not receive that. That is filthy rags to God. Self-righteousness. But because he loves us, he had a plan. And see, God knew man would fall. Why did God let that happen? And you answer that question, and I'll become a Christian. I'll tell you why. I'm going to answer the question. If you're listening to this and you're not a Christian, you become a Christian, okay? How do you become a Christian? You cry out to God. You fall on your face before the Holy One of Israel. You say to the Lord, Lord, show me that you're real. Show it to me, Lord. Show it to me. Because I want to believe. If When you show me that you're real, Lord, reveal to me that you're real. See? Cry out with a broken and contrite heart. Broken and contrite before the Lord. Not prideful, but broken and contrite. He will reveal himself to a broken and a contrite heart. See, God, he wanted to show forth his mighty love to mankind. And he knew sacrifice is the best way to show love. Sacrifice. Like a mother who sacrifices her life for her children and her husband. Her husband, her children, and her God. She sacrifices her life. Her life is consumed with raising the children in a godly way. 
Hallelujah. See? Because she loves her children. And it's not easy raising children in this hour, in this day. Because God loves us, he sent his son to die for us. He became as one of us, yet without sin. He didn't have any sin. None at all. Not one ounce. Jesus, his whole will was surrendered to the Father. All of his thinking, all of his emotions surrendered to the Father. And the Father used his thinking, used his emotions, and used his will for his glory. Jesus was determined to go to the cross. I mean, his face was set like flint. He told the, the apostles, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to Jerusalem. They're going to crucify me. And on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And then Peter said, Lord, far be it from thee. No, you're not going to go to Jerusalem and die. Far be it from thee, Lord. We'll never let that happen. And what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Because Peter was being used by the devil to try to prevent Jesus from going to the cross. That was the Father's will for Jesus to go to the cross. He was born into this world to die. That's why he was born into this world. To go to the cross and die for us. But before he did that, he had to show us how to walk the cross life. The life of self-denial. Because he loves us. Oh, hallelujah. And David was a man who denied himself. Yes, he did. David was anointed king, saints, and the Spirit of God came on him, and David had power. And the Lord led him in a way that was just so amazing. When you read the story in 1 Samuel, you read about David's life, and I got holy bumps, and thinking about him running from Saul on the right hand and on the left hand, and fighting the Lord's battles and killing the Philistines, and all that David did, and all that's not even recorded. Something like 15 years, you know, he was running from Saul. Because Saul was trying to kill David because of jealousy and envy. Oh, and it happened again, didn't it, when Jesus walked the earth. Oh, and it's happening today in the church. You have all these people who are the Sauls. And they're so envious and jealous of those who have the true anointing of the Lord. See, God's going to pour his spirit in us more and more and fill us more and more as we die more and more. And those who are not walking the cross life, they're walking the self-help life. I, like, I have a saying, they, they like to rub butter on everybody's back and make everybody feel good. It's always a smooth message and a nice message. Oh, there might be a little bit of word in there, you know, that's a little bit cutting, but never to the piercing of the heart. Most of the time, these preachers and teachers today, they're just showing the sword to everybody. Oh, they're looking at, you know, there's the word. Oh, how pretty it is. But when you take the word and you, you, the Lord just puts the sword in your mouth and you start to speak, it's a double-edged sword. It comes out of your mouth and it pierces and cuts into the heart of people. And it divides asunder between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. That's when they start grinding their teeth at you. They say you're an angry man. They say you're a liar. They say you're not speaking the truth. They nod their head no at you. Because, see, we're supposed to be loving. And we all know that love is so soft. Love is not hard. See? Love is soft. You tell that to the father whose 16-year-old boy is rebelling. And you tell him to be soft on his son when his son needs a good whipping. Like the scripture says. Because see. When you raise up a child in the ways you go. He will not depart from it. Because he loves us. He's given us his word. Because he loves us. He's put his spirit in us. And I know I'm going to read Psalm 145 here in, in a minute. But the Lord would have us know. That. 
It's not because of anything we do. Okay, really, it's not. See, our surrender comes because he gave us his grace and his faith. It didn't come because we decided one day I'm going to surrender. No, God moved circumstances in our life. I remember my own life. Uh, my father died in 1975, and, and I was a punk just growing up. I mean, I was rebellious, drugs, every. I mean, it was terrible. Terrible. But in 1976, my mother received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and she was a Roman Catholic, raised Roman Catholic. I was raised Roman Catholic. And her and my little sister, and boy, they were after me to, to, to get me to go to church. And I didn't want to go to church. And I was rebellious, and I didn't care about all that stuff. All I cared about was me having a good time and getting stoned that's all I cared about oh I believed God was real see but I was let's just say famous for having pity parties you know oh my dad died you know oh God you know I was mad at God and oh having a pity party just and, and it was just terrible I mean this is in the 70s I mean it was it was terrible but here's the Lord how he worked he just worked all the circumstances and my my sister was killed by a drunk driver 1980 on her 19th birthday right after her 19th birthday boom she was killed by a drunk driver and God used that event to make me think about him to make me think about heaven I was just 18 you know I was thinking about heaven thinking about God See, because he loved me, he created circumstances. He allowed things to happen to, to cause my focus to be steering toward heaven. So then when I was invited another time to go to a, to a, uh, a function, a Christian function, First Baptist Church of Houston was putting on, I went on a Wednesday night, gave my heart to the Lord. I just surrendered to God. I, I, I wanted Jesus. But I still didn't know about what the consequences of sin were. I didn't know about that Jesus had defeated the law of sin and death. I mean, I read about it. I read it in Romans. I got me a Bible. I seen it. But it wasn't until after 1995. In 1994, on Thanksgiving Day, I came back to the Lord. I backslid for nine years from from 85 to 94, and then the Lord brought me back to himself. He created circumstances again to bring me back. See, it's all by his grace that he did it. It wasn't anything that I did. It was just the moving, see, and this is what the Holy Spirit's doing. It says in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh. He's trying to reach this person and that person. When you see people out in the world today, the Holy Spirit's speaking to them, trying to woo them to come to the Lord Jesus. But most people reject. There's a line that God knows. Only God knows that line. When a person crosses that line, he blots their name out of the book that is written. So, we're to preach the gospel. We're to share the love of Jesus with everybody we see, with everybody that the Lord brings us in contact with, okay? Okay. And you're moved upon by the Spirit and you go and share the love of Jesus with them and ask them about their life and how they're doing. And the Lord will open opportunities as we surrender ourselves to the Lord to be available. He'll open up more opportunities, more opportunities for us to, to just share the love of Jesus with people. And the Lord wants people to come in to the family of God. The true way by sacrifice, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus not by making yourself better. You can't do it. See, it's by God's grace. And by his grace, because he loved us, he, he brought me back to himself. He brought my wife Sharon back to himself. And he's faithful. If you're hearing this today and you're saved, it's because of his grace that you're saved. It's not because of anything you've done. I mean, I mean all of us could tell story after story after story of how much sin we committed. But let me tell you something. We might remember the sins, but see, God doesn't remember them. 
He says he cast them as far as the east is from the west from us. And if the devil tries to put a guilt trip on us today by about some sin that we did 20 years ago or something, you tell the devil to take a hike. Because Christ Jesus has died. He removed that iniquity and that sin out of my life. Hallelujah. See? And the grace, it's all by the grace of God. It's because God loves us. Because he loves us. He says in the word, all the souls belong to him. That's right. He says in the word that he rules the heathen. You say, well, is he making people heathen? No, God's not making nobody a heathen. People are born heathens. We're born into this world a heathen. But all who are saved today and those who are going to be saved, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. And the Lord knows who those are. We don't know. We can think, man, that person's lost. They're going to hell. They're never going to make it in, you know, because of the way they're living or what they've done or whatever. We might think that in our mind and heart. But see, God can see their heart better than we can. And God knows what the truth is. That's why Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. In other words, don't condemn people to hell because you don't know. See, I know, says the Lord. And we can't condemn anybody say that per you're going to hell. You're going to go to the pit and that's final and that's it. We can't say that. Only God can say that. God is the judge. He rules the heathen. In other words, all the sin that's going on in the world, God has complete control of it. People can't do whatever they want to do. They think they can. There might be a husband today going to go cheat on his wife or a wife going to go cheat on her husband and they think they have control. God can just slam them down. God can make them have a flat tire, get into a car crash. Something happened to them on the way that they're going to go commit adultery against their spouse. Yeah, the Lord can do that. He's faithful. But he's not in sin. God is not in sin. He's of purer eyes than to behold evil. Evil cannot enter in to our holy God. David sinned. Yeah. David sinned. He preached a message years ago about the grace of God. And how David sinned with Bathsheba. He broke all the Ten Commandments just like that. This is after he's king. It's after God brought him through all the tribulation and everything. And he's taking it easy. Should have been out at war. And he spies Bathsheba and sees her. And he wants her. So he goes and takes her. He covets after her. Then he steals her. Commits adultery with her. Lies about it. Bears false witness. Broke all the commandments. Dishonored God's name. Blasphemed his name. Probably did it on the Sabbath day. And what did, what happened? A year later, see? Almost a year later, here comes Nathan the prophet. See? About nine months later, here comes Nathan. Because Bathsheba was with child, so David murdered Uriah the Hittite. Had him murdered. And here comes Nathan and he rebukes David. He tells the story. About the man stealing the other poor man's lamb. David said, bring him here. I'm going to slay him. Who is he? And Nathan says, you're the man, David. What did David do? He repented. He repented. And Nathan said, the Lord has taken away the sin, David. It's the grace of God. Because David, according to the Mosaic Law, should have been taken out and stoned along with Bathsheba. But God's grace was sufficient for David. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care what you've done. You're listening to this message today. God wants you to know he'll forgive your sin. He's already forgiven it in Christ. But now you have to come receive it. And you receive it by repentance and believing the gospel. Because he loves us, he's made a way for us to be saved. So that we don't have to spend an eternity in hell. 
in separation from God. We can walk in unity with him, in oneness. Jesus said, me and the Father will come to you. We will make our abode within you. Hallelujah. I mean, we, we cannot fathom that, saints, the, the almighty creator of all things living inside of us, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, in the day of Moses, they built the tabernacle. Everything points to Christ. And let me show you. They made the Ark of the Covenant. And that Ark was covered with gold within, inside, and outside. The acacia wood, it was made of acacia wood, speaks of Christ's humanity. And the gold speaks of his purity, his divinity. And the Holy Ghost came down, the Shekinah glory, on top of that mercy seat and filled that house, filled that tabernacle. Hallelujah. And then when Solomon built the temple, the same thing happened. And the whole temple was filled with smoke and just, just God was just dwelling right there in the temple. The Holy Spirit just came down, the Shekinah glory, shaboom. And today, we are the ark. We are the ones who bear within us the Holy Spirit. The spirit of mercy and grace. Let's look at this first before I read. I'll read this to you. See, we talk about the word name in our ministry here. And name means authority and character. And when you look it up in the Bible, the, uh, the phrase... The name of the Lord, the authority, the character of our God. And in Exodus, Exodus 34, it says right here, hallelujah, verse 5, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord, the character, the authority, the dominion of our God. Moses is right there. God pushed him into the rock. He came down. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful. See, there's number one, mercy. Merciful. Don't listen to the lie of your flesh or the lie of the world or the lie of the devil any longer. God's name is mercy. Merciful. He's got mercy for you today. He's got mercy for all of us today. Merciful and gracious. Gracious. Look at that beauty. Long suffering. Long suffering. How many of you today hearing this? <clears throat> maybe the Lord has spoken something to you and you haven't done it yet. Whatever it is. And he's been long-suffering with you. God says, forbear no longer. God says, forbear no longer. Be obedient to me. That's what he says. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Because he loves us. Because he loves humanity. God sent his only begotten son to die for us. Hallelujah. And that will by no means clear the guilty. See, God's not going to clear those who continually reject his name, who continually reject his character, reject his authority, his dominion. They reject his grace. They reject the faith. They reject the hope, the love. They reject the Lord Jesus Christ and his life. God's not going to clear those people. 
will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the, iniqui the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. You see, when you really know the Lord, you bow and worship before him. You just bow. You have to. Because he is almighty God, almighty love, almighty mercy, almighty grace. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise his holy name. You know, we can have grace one for another. And we do, don't we? We have grace one for another. See? But it's nothing compared to God's grace. Hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> Look at Psalm 145, David, a psalm of praise. And David wrote this psalm because he knows, he knew that Yahweh loved him. He said, I will extol thee, my God, O King. And I will bless thy name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Extol, hallelujah, to, to rise, to be high, actively to rise. I will lift up your name, Lord. I will extol thee, my God. O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that we would never have another day where we don't bless the Lord, O oh, our soul. And all that is within us, bless his holy name. Amen. Oh, yeah, we'll get up in the morning and say, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I bless you, God. Lord, I pray you help me today. And We'll say our prayers and we'll seek the Lord. And then we'll go about our day and stuff will start getting hard or something's happening. And and sometimes, saints, you know, the enemy's job is to is to keep us from remembering, okay? Instead of saying, when we have a hard time, Father, help me. See what I'm going through? See? We might start fussing because of the hard way. And the Lord gently comes down and says, hey, I'm right here. I remember one time we were going through such a trial, uh, and, and we were going through it, boy. I mean, it was hard. And the Lord spoke to me, he's, and, and he said, you're a soldier of the cross. You know, Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Because I was having all these emotions and feelings going on, and I was getting angry and mad, and things were really hard, you know. And the Lord, he rebuked me. See, that was his grace. <laughs> and I said, you're right, Lord. You're right. You're right. Praise your holy name. Began to worship him. See, David said, every day will I bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, David said, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, his greatness is unsearchable. But doesn't mean we can't search because we can. Hallelujah. That's what it says in Jeremiah chapter 29. Oh, hallelujah. One generation. That's our generation right now. Those who were born baby boomers from 1945, 46 to 1963, 62. Okay. Our generation. One generation shall praise thy works to another. And shall declare thy mighty acts. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe you have children today that aren't saved. And you know what? It, it can wear on you. You're praying for years and years and years. Your children aren't getting salvation. It can wear on you. But you know what? It might be after we're already gone that our children get saved. Amen? Praise the Lord. We don't know. But let's keep praying. Don't stop praying. And just because we don't see it in our lifetime doesn't mean it won't happen. George Mueller play, prayed for four men. From the time he got to England, he, he knew these four people. He was praying for them for their salvation. Four of them. 
and all four of them got saved. And one of them got saved after Jordan Mueller died. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is faithful. You pray, we pray. We pray for our children. God says, I'm going to bring your seed from the east, and the west, and the north, and the south. See, we bless his holy name because he loves us. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you. This is how David was praising the Lord. And this is what we need to do. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. And shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord, oh hallelujah, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. Oh, hallelujah. See, because he loves us, I'm going to stop right there. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 8. I'm going to go over here to Jonah. I want to read this to you out of the book of Jonah. And this is, I mean, this is so powerful. You know, Jonah, the man of God. God called him. He said, you go over here, Jonah. Preach to the Ninevites. Oh, hallelujah. And the king of Nineveh, he said, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? They heard the preaching of Jonah and, and the king repented. And he told everybody dressed in sackcloth. And they all put sackcloth on all the animals. They were really repenting. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Because he loves his people. God loves people. See, all humanity belongs to God. See? But what happened is man gave control to the devil. Man said, no, I'm not going to do it your way, God. I'll do it my own way. I'm not going to give you my life. I'm going to give you something I create. Or something I did. But not myself. And this is what mankind is continually doing. But these people repented. They repented at the preaching of Jonah. Look at verse chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. That's, that's terrible, isn't it? You would think the prophet would be happy that the people repented. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. See, he knew that. That's why he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He knew God would forgive them if they repented. He knew there was a chance they would repent. You think about that. This is Jonah, a prophet. God's prophet. So if there are times where we act like Jonah, we need to repent. Because see, God saved those people in Nineveh, that generation. But we know later on, he destroyed the whole city. Because see, that's what happens. When Josiah was king, the people were rejoicing. He had the great Passover, the greatest Passover there ever was. And the people were worshiping God again and doing right. But their heart was far from it. And when Josiah died, they went right back to their idols. Right back to their idols. But that does not stop God's grace. That does not stop the fact that God is gracious. When people rebel against God. That's the beauty of our Lord. There's, there's a chance. God says there's a chance today. You're hearing this. You have a chance right now. 
to surrender more fully to the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, surrender, fall down before him. Let him have you. But Jonah, see, he quoted this. I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 145, 8 again. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, hallelujah. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. Oh, hallelujah. Talk of the Lord's power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up those that be bowed down. Are you bowed down today? The Lord says he wants to raise you up. <coughs> the eyes of all wait upon thee and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Oh, praise his holy name. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth with a sincere heart, saints. Hallelujah. Broken before him. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. See, because he loves us. Read that again. Verse 18 and 19, Psalm 145. And earlier, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about reading the Psalms in prayer. See, this is a, a, a prayer. This is a worship unto the King, hallelujah, that David was proclaiming. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him he also will hear their cry and will save them the lord preserveth all them that love him but all the wicked will he destroy my mouth shall speak the praise of the lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever Oh, hallelujah. Look, but all the wicked will God destroy. These are those who reject the Lord. God says he's going to destroy them. Oh, that the Lord would show forth today. And I pray, Father, you show forth your mighty grace today to multitudes. Lord, the enemy thinks he's winning. We pray today that you show forth your mighty right arm of deliverance for your people and for those whom you've chosen before the foundation of the earth, those who are still right now, even right now, Father, in the devil's camp, that you bring them out. Bring them out, Father. Send forth your chief princes, your holy angels, to work the circumstances, Lord, in the lives of those whom you have chosen from the foundation of the world and bring them into the Son, Father. Bring them into the Son, Holy Spirit. Draw them in. Draw them in. 
Give them a cause, Lord. Give them a cause today to come to the Son, to repent and be filled with the Spirit of God, born anew from heaven. Lord, we pray for those who are saved. We pray for those who are filled with your Spirit, that you, Lord, as you said in your word, Lord Jesus, that that your river, your water of life, would flow out of our bellies. We'd be filled with the Spirit. Oh, Jesus, let it be so even more so today than ever before. Let us walk in that faith, hope, love, truth, justice, righteousness that you are, Lord Jesus. All the fruit of the Spirit, the mercy, the long-suffering. And oh, Father, we thank you today. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for provision, Lord, on the right hand and on the left. Bless you, God, for vanquishing your enemies, O God. Hallelujah. For your enemies are our enemies, Lord. Thank you for vanquishing, Lord. Thank you for protecting us from the enemy. Thank you for your holy seal, your holy shield around us. Oh, we bless you today, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. You are so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise and bless you, Lord. Father, I just thank you. And I ask you, Father, that you would show each one of us today. Show us collectively. Show us individually. Great and mighty things, Father. Things we have not seen before. We... We know your word says, Lord, that you're past finding out. But we know your word says that when we seek you, we will find you. When we search for you with all of our hearts. And I pray you put that deep in our heart today, Lord, that we would search for you with all of our hearts. And that we surrender fully to you more and more under the perfect day. Crush that old devil, Lord, and throw him down under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. Oh, he's so gracious to us. The Lord bless you today. Keep you. Make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you. Grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Those who are his be filled with his fullness today as never before. His grace, mercy, love faith, hope, long-suffering, all of his virtue be upon you and in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.